All right, so I'm going to talk to you about crowdsourcing. Um, so my, I'm, I'm, I know most of everybody in the room, maybe a couple people that I haven't met before, but I'm a biostatistician in the UW Center for Biomedical Statistics. I've been with the ITHS, I think since, since inception, uh, 2007, roughly, is when I started with it. So I, I, I feel like an old timer with the ITHS. Lately, I've been spending my time mainly on, on, on data coordination center activities for a number of big projects one of which I'm going to just touch on briefly in, in the middle of the talk today because we're going to use crowdsourcing in it. Since this is a topic on crowdsourcing, I'm going to pretend like you guys are a crowd that I'm going to draw from on a couple of occasions, starting with now. Uh, I just want to know how many people have a, a pretty good idea of what crowdsourcing is. Okay, a few people. How many people have used crowdsourcing in research? I knew you would raise your hand. So, <laughs> do you have any publications with crowdsourcing? Yes, I do. Perfect. So, so basically, I'm going to start. You know, there's this. Um, there are two concepts um, that use the word crowd in them, and, and the one that I'm going to talk to you about today is crowdsourcing. And and really, uh, if you if you look that up on Wikipedia, it's basically defined as the practice of obtaining needed services, ideas, or content by soliciting contributions from a large group of people, and especially from an online community. Uh, rather than from traditional employees or suppliers. This is, whenever I mention this talk, this is the version of crowdsourcing that people think about. And this, this is kind of a funny cartoon. It says, remember, we're not begging, we're crowdfunding. Um, <laughs> and, and, and so it's, they're, they're two separate ideas. Crowdsourcing is, is, I have a task that needs to get done, and I want a lot of people to do it, uh, and I'm willing to pay them. Um, maybe, <laughs> and, and the crowdfunding is a little bit different. I have, I have an idea and I want to solicit funding from people, a lot of people, uh, and put it together. I'll just give you a few examples. So really this talk is going to be sort of in three parts. One is sort of a background on crowdsourcing as I see it, uh, and, and then the middle part is basically a, a research project that um, emanated from a, a, an ITHS consult um, with an investigator that some of you might know. and, and uh, you know, the, why, uh, why this one resonated with me is I, I've been a member of the crowd. So I've, my wife and I, uh, years ago, when we had like two or three kids and they were all in diapers and she's a stay-at-home mom and she's wondering, you know, how can I make a few bucks on the side? And I knew about um, this crowdsourcing website called Amazon Turk. And I said, here, why don't you, why don't you play around with this? And uh, it basically, she would, um, do a few tasks on Amazon Turk, get paid, and it would go right into her Amazon uh, account, and then diapers would show up two days later uh, <laughs> in the mail. So it was kind of a fun way for us to, you know, sit on the couch holding a baby and answering surveys for somebody. So the other sort of classic, maybe most famously known um, crowdsourcing project is the Netflix Prize. If you offered a few years ago, about four or five years ago, Netflix put out uh, a call for peop for a uh, million dollars. They would offer up a million dollars to any group or person that could improve their prediction performance of their rating. So every video you can rate one, two, three, or four, or five, depending on what you like it. And if you could improve their current performance by 10% or greater, they'd give you a million dollars. And so they gave you, they gave groups like gigabytes and gigabytes of data, and they would you know you know have complex statistical models uh, uh, run on the data and uh, I think a group out of Bell Labs actually ended up winning the million dollar prize. Another example is this place called crowdspring.com. Um, it's, it's an interesting um, crowdsourced website in that they basically, um, they design stuff. They're like designers, they're like web designers. So if you've got an idea and you want a logo, you could go to crowdsource.com, pay them $300 and you'll get, you know, within a matter of days, I think, uh, get up to 100 different logos based on the idea that you put forth. Um, and you can select whichever one you want. And so they, they have a, a, a list of about 150,000 people in their crowd who claim to do this. Crowdflower.com is, like is, like is like the brokerage of all crowdsourcing websites. websites. So it, I think, aggregates across like places like Crowdspring or, or Amazon MTurk, which is the one that I'm going to talk to you mostly about today. Um, and it, it basically says, we've got five million com contributors in the crowd across the world that are willing and able to do tasks um, that you put, put out. So Amazon Turk, uh, if you go to mturk.com, you can sign up. You'll sign on with your, with your Amazon ID. And 
basically they, they claim it to be artificial, artificial intelligence. So it's um, sort of a cute um, word, but basically it's a marketplace for human intelligence tests. And again, if I've got, if I want to get opinions on a lot of, you know, a lot of people, or if I want um, to do any number of tasks, I'll give you a few examples in a second, you can go there, post them, and get responses immediately. Currently, they list about 500,000 uh, crowd contributors on Amazon Turk across 190 countries. And as of yesterday, or a couple days ago, there were 475,000 hits available. So um, these tests, there were, there were almost a half a million tests out there that you could sign up for. Um, and they range in price from basically a penny. You can do a test and you'll get a penny if, if you do a good job, <laughs> up to like 35 bucks. And basically those funds, um, once, once they're approved, they go right into your Amazon account. All right, so who are these people? Uh, on Amazon. So R Ross in 2010 basically did um, uh, a study on the demographics of Amazon Turkers and uh, a little over half of them are in the United States and with India uh, steadily increasing right now I think in 2010 it was 36 percent of Turkers were from India and 8 percent were from other countries across the world. Uh, about a 50-50 split with with females and males. Um, most are sort of in that young adult age group uh, and in the United States, about half made less than $20,000 a year, and 85% uh, of Indian workers make less than $20,000 a year who work to Amazon Turkers. And these people are actually pretty smart. 55% they're, they're, of U.S. workers had a bachelor's or a degree or higher, and 66% of Indian workers did. So on Amazon, I have demographics. So my demographics, what can you know about me as, as, a, as a member of the crowd? Basically, if, if I sign up to do a task and I submit my data, what does the, the requester get? They get my worker ID. Um, that's, that's how they pay me. Um, they get the number of hits that I've submitted and the number of hits that um, have been accepted. So what does that mean? So basically, I've... I've uh, I've done 112 hits, and 110 of them were deemed acceptable enough for somebody to pay me. So two people tricked me, and I was not happy with them. My, my wife has a, a better hit rate than I do. She's, she, she warned me about these tricky ones, but I didn't listen. Um, they'll learn that I'm in the United States, and, and then basically they get a sense of how long it took me to, to complete that task. And they can filter who gets to take their their hits, who, who gets to do their hits. So a lot of times people will say, you can only do this if you've got a 99% approval rating or better. And I, I don't want anybody with a lower approval rating than, than, than that. You can restrict to certain countries. You can restrict um, based on a number of things, based on the number of hits you've actually done. So I don't, I don't care that your approval rating is 100% if you've only done five hits. I want you to have done at least 100 maybe. So if you go on and you log into um, Amazon Turk, the typical types of activities that are up there and available are, you know, write a passage about a topic. And I, I think of these as sort of like um, feeding like spam websites, those garbage websites that you find out on Google that are like listed in the ad section or whatever. And if you click on it, somebody gets a penny and it's just junk. Like, you know, write, write a passage about Mount Rainier and you just talk about Mount Rainier and then somebody looks, you know, develops a, a website that looks like it's, you know, official about Mount Rainier. Um, so I, another one is to fill out a survey. So if you, need, if you need information or if you're looking to solicit opinions from people, this is a way to do that and pay them um, whatever you feel like is the right value. Translate a passage into a different language. These ones are often, um, they pay the most. So if you need a, a, a passage that's in English translated to German, um, they'll actually pay you, you know, 10 or 12 bucks to do that or something like that. Um, search the web for images. This is a bizarre one. So yeah, I've seen this so many times, you know, where, well, somebody will pay you like three cents for every image that is, you know, about a certain topic. And then again, participate in research surveys. So there's, there, I haven't seen too much like what I would think of as, as classical sort of research projects out on Amazon Turk. Um, what I'll typically see is, is, again, opinion surveys, and they typically originate from like a, a psychology department. And you'll see, um, and you'll, you'll be able to call them out. They'll have like a consent form that was approved by the University of Pennsylvania, and, and then they'll want to talk to you about you know, your opinions on sexuality or something like that. And <laughs> so there, there's a number of, uh, uh, but you know, just a small number of, uh, of actual research, I think, actually going on. 
And then basically, I, what I see this is, is a lot of is that basically tasks that a computer probably could do, if I were smart enough to actually com program the computer to do it, um, you know, if, if I've got, if, if, if I had a passage of text with no spaces in it, I could probably, I could probably um, separate out the words and make that, you know, make that into a sort of a, a cohesive paragraph. I don't know if I could write a computer program to do that. Maybe somebody else in the back row up there could, but, but not me. But I could probably put that task up on MTurk and have it done in an hour. This is an example, a screenshot of what the Amazon MTurk page looks like. So I basically said, you know, what are, what are hits that I'm qualified for uh, that pay greater than 50 cents? And there were 137 of them at the time. And so I can go through, I can actually view an example of the hit before I promise to sign up to do it. And, and if I don't like it midway, I can actually send it back and say I'm not, I'm not interested. So here's an example. This one, this one's like an enticing example. $1.50 on Amazon Turk is kind of a lot. Um, a lot of these are really <laughs> small value. And this, so this one, this one could really, um, while you get paid $1.50, it could, it could actually work out real badly for you because you're basically, they're asking you to call an insurance uh, agency uh, customer service line and listen to them for th up to for at least three minutes, uh, and they will try to sell you whatever products that they sell. And so you'll get paid if you can stay on the phone for longer than three minutes, and then provide a you know a, a satisfaction survey with how how was that customer service experience, and that's what they're paying for you. And I and I'm guessing like you know five or ten percent of people actually probably sign up for something. So this is their way of of getting more customers, I think. Here's another example, uh, four cents per title, and there were 88,000 of these types of hits available. Um, this is basically, you wanna read a title and make it better. So somebody, somebody like did a word jumble in Excel or something like that, and you know, basically, uh, you know, an example is statue life-sized portrait bust, and it might uh, translate that into life-sized bust or something like that. So it's a really silly, um, exercise, but there are a lot of them available. And then the last one, this is where I made the, the two bucks. So I, I signed up for a 150 cent survey, just again to get a screenshot for this, for this presentation. Uh, and in the process of doing that, they liked whatever I had said in that survey and they invited me to take another one that was $1.50. So I did that one too. It basically took me nine minutes or whatever to do both. Um, so if you translate that into like an hourly rate, you know, it's maybe a little bit above minimum wage. That's a bit about crowdsourcing. So I think, I think that gives you a, an idea of the, the types of, of, of things that are out there, what, some places that actually do this that are online, and, and I'm gonna go into how we've used it um, in a research project. And, and this has actually seeded a number of other research, of, of uh, subsequent research projects as well. My buddy Tom Lenve in the Department of Urology and at Seattle Children's Hospital came to me and asked me, how many people do I need? The classic sort of biostat consult, it starts with how many people do I need? Uh, and, and then I said, well, what's, you know, what's the project about? And we went through the usual um, consult and I, I told him, I, I know a lot about this. Let's, let's design this study. Um, and, and really, the, the title of this, and it's actually been published, um, it, it'll be on PubMed, uh, is Crowdsourced Assessment of Technical Skills, a Novel Method f uh, to Evaluate Surgical Performance. So Tom, Tom works in a group that educates um, people who are going to become robotic surgeons. So they're do, they do a lot of training on the Da Vinci robot and on the Raven. And um, again, in order to be able to do that on real live human beings, you have to do a series of tests that on pegboards or on suturing skills or things like that. And then somebody has to review what you're doing and, and critique it and make sure that you are, you know, have the proper credentials to actually go and operate on people. So he, he, he heads this educational, this, this, it's really educational and training program and needed a more efficient way of getting evaluations on robotic, sur robotic surgeries, uh, videos per, uh, of those robotic surgeries. Um, so the study aim is basically to test the accuracy of Amazon's uh, MTurk and, uh, and Facebook. Facebook sort of crept in there because one of the other investigators was interested. Facebook has this mechanism to get people um, as well to do this, uh, compared to basically experienced surgical faculty grading and rating a recorded dry lab robotic um, suturing performance. And they've got this, this OSATS tool, which is basically like three questions, you know, 
on a Likert scale. And you combine the response to the three questions. You can range from three, which would be a terrible performance, up to a 15, which would be awesome. And everybody gets a score for, for each video. And really, you know, again, the study motivation is, is that ex rating these video performances is, is expensive and slow. If I've got to get a robotic surgeon to come and look at a video, and a number of videos, that, that's number one, hard to do, hard to schedule, and uh, it's expensive and it wastes their time. Um, and, but it's required, again, for these trainees to move on in their program. So really the study design, as I said, was MTurkers versus expert surgeons, and we had a secondary aim of looking at Facebookers. Facebookers, I don't know if that's a word or not. Um, and the outcome measures the sum of these three Likert scales, and they, there's three domains. There's like depth perception by manual dexterity and efficiency or economy of motion. So we asked, we asked MTurkers to look at all three of these domains and provide their assessment of how good the video was. In the analysis plan, as I, you know, again, talked with this through Tom, and again, I'll, I'll put the sample size up there first because that's where we started with the conversation. Um, but, but, but I really made him go into an equivalency study. I want to know, are the Amazon MTurkers uh, equivalent roughly, to what a robotic surgeons would say. So we had a convenient sample of, of 10 um, expert surgeon raters. Um, that was as many as we could get. And, and basically, in order to state that Amazon Turker ratings were within a, a, a point, we used this margin of equivalence for, of a point, um, that their average um, rating was within the surgeon rating. We needed 400 M Turker ratings. So again, this is a you know, pilot experiment. We had, I think, $1,500 to do this project, and that was well within the budget. And you know, we said, that's fine. Let's go for, we'll get 400. And we used 110 Facebooks uh, as a convenient sample. Again, just to go through, this is, this is a study. It's a research study. We had to get IRB approval to do it. Um, we have like a little consent form, a uh, small consent form. Uh, we had to select a candidate video. Um, we had some pre-task questions. Um, we, their task was to watch this video and then provide responses. Uh, and then basically we uh, paid them, paid Turkers. We didn't pay the surgeons. They did, we didn't think like a buck was going to mean anything to them. Um, and we paid them 25 cents for the pre-task question and then a buck for, the, for those who were paying attention. They all went through the same process, basically. Um, uh, we, we have, we have two, two screening tests. This was screening test number one. So here's the second part where you're going to be my crowd, and you need to pay attention. And I'm going to give you, which, so the question is, which panel demonstrates the more experienced surgeon? Panel A or panel B, left hand or right hand side? Which one's better? I'll show of hands in a second. All right. How many would have said the right-hand panel? All right, I got one guy. You got screened out. <laughs> so, so basically, we didn't, you know, it was determined ahead of time that, that pan, panel A, the left-hand side, was better, um, a better performance. Um, it was rated better. Um, and that basically we thought that we would, we would take the ratings. We'd ask everybody to rate regardless the next video, which is the real video. This was just our screener. Um, but we would only, in our evaluation of their performance, use the people who rated panel A as the good video, as the better surgeon. And so this was the actual performance. I, don't, I won't go through the whole thing, but this is the type of thing that people are, have to do on a Da Vinci robot or on the Raven. They have to do some suturing skills and some knot tying skills. Um, and again, there's somebody back behind there operating a little joystick and doing things. So you don't give information about what, or do you give information about what they're trying to do? I mean, yeah, oh yeah. On the consent form, it, we basically explain, you know, and again, they have to read this, you know, one paragraph about like, you know, they're, they're trying to do a, su a suturing and we're basically trying to test to s see if you guys can um, determine the quality of the, this suturing performance. So I won't play the whole thing there, but. That's, that's, that, this was the, best, the, the test video. 
And so in the middle of the questions, in the middle of the radio buttons, we had screening test number two. And basically, and this was my idea, because this is one that tripped me up uh, and ruined my 100% rating a couple of times. So please read the following before providing a response. The following question is just designed to see how well you can follow instructions. Do not mark an answer, as you will not be paid for this hit if you provide a response. Not marking a response applies to this question only. How well do you pay attention to details? And um, is this, this filtered out a few people. It filtered out one of the surgeons even, so um, unfortunately. And we didn't use their data. <laughs> so it, 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 it's quite cute, but in, and in reality, I don't, I don't think, um, if you look at the people who got filtered out by this, they didn't do that much differently than the people who did. So it was, it was a catch, and we, we, stu we stuck with our original plan of only using the people who passed this test. All right, so here's the, basically the flow. So of, we, we, we recruited 500 MTurk ratings, um, and we had 409 that passed both tests. Uh, we had 110 Facebookers, and only 67 of them passed both tests. So they, they got filtered out a lot more, which may be telling. Um, and then uh, you know, nine out of our 10 surgeons passed as well. This graph basically shows um, the time until we re achieved complete uh, response. So all, all of the data we were hoping to achieve from the 10 surgeons and all of the ratings from the, the MTurkers, we turned it on one afternoon and in the middle of the night it was done. We got our 500 responses from the Turkers. So that, that blue line is basically just like in a matter of 10 or 12 hours, we got 500. Here's the data. For this, for this one video, for this one study, this is a density plot. It's basically a, a, a histogram uh, with, a, with a line of, and superimposed over it. The black line are the, the ratings of the expert surgeons. Um, the green uh, line are, is the Facebookers, and the red line are the, the Turkers. So basically, on average, the experts, their mean score was 12.11 for that video that I just showed you. And again, the range is from 3 to 15. Um, the MTurkers rated it 12.21, so they were 0.1 points difference on their average mean rating. Uh, and the Facebookers even were pretty good too, 12.06, they were even closer. So basically the black uh, horizontal line at the top represented our equivalence region. Uh, the, the MTurk, so our, again, uh, if you recall, the, this was an equivalency study, which means basically that the confidence interval around the mean for the MTurkers had to lie exactly within that black region, and, and it did. And same with the Facebookers. So that was, uh, that was our observation. That was our conclusion. We wrote a paper about that graph. I want to know, on average, what, what does this video get? And I think, on average, we got pretty close to what the surgeons would have said. So what's the next study, and the next study after that, and the next study after that? So we've got preliminary data on the next study. So we took, um, we took 50 videos. So we have the, 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 the great thing about this, this group is they've got more videos than, than people and resources to, you know, to do with them. So, so, so long as they have an efficient way of getting videos up to YouTube and then up to um, Amazon Turk, which we're in the process of doing, we're getting that process, that we're getting this system down to the point where um, a robotic surgeon trainee can come in, take a pretest, we can post that video to YouTube and get it up there, get ratings. They could get training, like for the first part of the day for a couple of hours, take a post test, we post that, and then within, within an hour, we can, we can detect the, the, the impact of that training. We've done that recently. And we noticed that you know, one, uh, the, the one test case uh, improved 10% in their ratings over from the pre to the post. So we've done four more studies since this one that I'm showing you here. And the thing that is consistent is that they can sort. You know, it's, 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 it's that there's variability and there's natural variability and maybe you can do some work in, on picking out people who are less variable, but on average, they can sort good from bad. And I think that's what's really important. And even, even, um, even if there's bias or even if there's like, again, what we find in some of these studies is that the crowd is kind of afraid and that, and that if you've got the best surgical performance ever, it deserves a 15. Every surgeon in the world would rate it as a 15 on this scale. On average, because you've asked a thousand people or 50 people or 30 people out in the world to do it, it's going to be biased. It's going to be under 15. So what you'll see is when you get up towards the tail for really good videos, that the, the Turkers tend to rate those lower. But I don't really care because those are really good videos anyway. And we're starting to change our, you know, because the way this is really um, used in practice is you've got to score a 12 or above and I'm not, or I'm not moving you on. That's the, so I don't care that you're a, a 11 and a half or a, or a 10 and a half, 
it's, there's a threshold effect where I'm going to say pass fail. The goal here, I think, is you know, could this replace the current rating um, model? Is it, do we do we trust this? Right. You know, and so right now we're doing studies to uh, test our trust in it. A number of you are familiar with our Bold project. We recruited about a little over 5,000 people from across three health systems in the United States. They had back pain, and um, we've got you know, electronic medical record data on all of them for 20 of 24 month window. Um, and, and they're all from like closed health systems. So they were, uh, again, we have like everything that you can, that you can have that is within the health system. Uh, and more recently, uh, we have uh, this project um, with the National Institute of Health Common Fund called LEAR, Lumbar Imaging and Reporting of Epidemiology. Uh, and I'll talk to you about that in a little bit too. That one's a little bit even scarier than bold. So um, both of them are led by Jerry Jarvik in Radiology and Health Services. So, so really, again, the, the goal of this Boulder project is to continue people, continuing following these people. Um, that was sort of like aim one of it. And again, we, we've got patients from Henry Ford Hospital up in Detroit, um, the Kaiser Northern California Health System and Harvard Vanguard. And, and in there, we, we were asked and allowed to provide a little pilot project. Um, and this came, you know, this was our pilot project, basically, on these 5,239 patients, we have a total of 6,000 imaging reports, so text-based imaging reports. And uh, the question is, is what's in those? What are the, what's in those imaging reports? What did, what did, the, what did the image find? And uh, you know, a number of methods can be used to uh, uh, abstract information from those. Uh, so we, we proposed doing this with crowdsourcing. So we're explore data abstraction methods. And Lear, Lear's a bit scarier because it's bigger. It's, it's a, it uses some of the same health systems. We're going to randomize 110 clinics, uh, and we're going to um, randomize them according to this, this goofy stepped wedge design where the, all of the clinics are going to get this intervention turned on at one time point or another, and we're going to study whether or not that intervention has uh, uh, an impact on healthcare reutilization, uh, subsequent imaging, subsequent narcotics, um, et cetera. And, and basically, we're adding in a piece of text at the bottom of an image. So a CPT code generates, uh, is generated, and so one of these 10 CPT codes we're looking at, you know, we'll refer to a, either an X-ray, a CT, or an MR of the spine. And depending on your age, you'll get a different set of text. If we were to look at your spine, we're going to find things. In, and you may or may not have back pain today, but if you, you will probably um, list out disc degeneration, we'll probably list out that you've got a, a disc bulge. Um, and, and so the question is, should you be worried about that? Um, or is that just like something that happens to everybody as a part of natural aging? And there's a lot of data out there on, so I don't know how they got this much data on imaging on people without back pain, um, but we're, we're basically inserting sort of benchmark data, baseline data. So if you go get a lab test, a blood test, you'll get the, your lab result and you'll get a reference range. We're really, really pro providing the reference range here that not doesn't exist. So this, this, this text will be inserted at the bottom of every, um, every image within these health systems. So there'll be about 250,000 patients involved. And um, the question is, is you know, we're going to do this intent to treat analysis where it's just you know, as randomized, but this really is aimed at affecting the people who have some of these indications. The only way we're going to find that out is if we go and identify the patients that have an indication in the image text. So this is an example from Henry Ford Hospital of an image text um, that we received through electronic data polls. Um, and again, we've got thousands of these types of texts. And the fun things about Henry Ford's uh, radiology information system is, is that they omit spaces every so often, which has, re <laughs> has, has really been like troublesome. And it's kind of pesky uh, when we've tried to implement, you know, really preliminary like NLP stuff. Uh, it's really pesky. I mean, me as a human, I can come through here and rate that, and I've got a rating form, and we can, we can find, pick out the things that are relevant. This is an example from Harvard Vanguard. It's a lot more structured. Um, and they're, they often, they, they, they all look like this. So they've got some structure to them. There's no space issues. It's a lot nicer. Um, 
And so in Lear, we've got two more health systems, and two of them we're, we're going to be exploring what, they're, what they give us uh, as a result of this. And I've checked that spacing issue isn't like some goofy SAS program you know, doing it. It's, it's, just, it's just there. It's something about their, their radiology information system. And these are the types of findings that we're looking for. Again, I don't really want to go through each of these individually, but, but these are the things we're going to ask MTurkers to rate. Do you see type 1 modic change in this imaging text report, yes or no? And if yes, where do you see it? Do you, do you see it L1, L2? Like, which, which area of the spine is noted? And that's it. We have 10, 10 questions, and then where. If you find it, where? The pilot study aims are to test the accuracy here uh, versus NLP versus a trained graduate uh, medical student. So, we're, so really, our gold standard here are going to be two guys sitting down with um, some images and, and, and rating them all. Uh, and then when, where they disagree, because they will, because this happens every single time, uh, uh, they'll, they'll have the, the senior radiologist come in and, and they'll do like some sort of you know, meeting where they come up with a final rating. So again, the motivations were, one, we had an opportunity in a grant to, to write something fun and special, and the reviewers liked it, so that was interesting. We're just curious if, if we can do this. We have a lot of images. We have 6,000 in bold, and we have, we're going to have at least 250,000 in, in Lear. Um, and again, we're, 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 we're putting resources, and we have, you know, we've been in conversations with people in this room about NLP, and, and we're going we're gonna to see. We're going to see what, you know, I think, what, what is the likelihood that uh, the Turkers can do uh, as good of a job as NLP. Uh, and then again, there's just no way I want to. I, I want to put grad students through this. So really, here's the design. I really would appreciate any sort of tweaks to the design. So I've got currently I have IRB approval. Um, I have the questions set up. I have a survey, uh, and now I, I have money, so I, <laughs> so I can throw money at this. And I just want. Um, I, I really, you know, if you've got feedback to the design I'm about to show you, then then feel free and and uh, let me know. So. So really, we're going to study implementation, imp implementation time, cost, and then um, again, just the accuracy of the findings, the so presence or absence of findings, and then again, the severity. Um, uh, and then we're going to use things like accuracy, sensitivity, specificity to, to summarize those results. And what I've pulled out so far is a, a random sample of image texts from the three health systems we have as a part of Boulder. So, um, and then it's again stratified by health system and imaging modality because. The things that you can pick out on an MR are different than the things you can pick out on an X-ray, and so we expect to see different things reported, if depending on the modality. So I've got I've got 400 of these guys, and here's the design really. So NLP is going to give us a, a single rating. Um, we're going to get two to three ratings. We'll get two ratings from the from the medical students, and and then a, again a a third uh, tiebreaker when needed. Um, so that's the right hand arm. And then the MTurk, the proposal right now, um, what I put in the grant was that we would get five ratings per image, and then I would rate them as negative if, if zero or one people indicated a finding. I would rate them as sort of inconclusive or uncertain if, if, if two or three um, of the five rated uh, the finding as being there, and then if four or five positive ratings would indicate that the finding was there. And I'm going to stratify this, so basically what I proposed in the grant was that we'd pay um, for tw 20 cents per rating, but I, now I, I really do want to learn more about the payment scheme, and I want to learn, you know, if I pay them 10 cents, do I get better data, uh, worse data than if I pay 50 cents? So what, uh, again, so, so right now I've got, as, you know, I'm, my candidates are 10, 20, and 50 cents per, per image, and I'm going to get five ratings at each of those, for each of the videos at each of those uh, payments.